a lesson on two trait Punnett squares, sex linked Punnett squares and pedigrees. So um, I wanted to teach you a trick for doing the two trait Punnett squares really quickly. And uh, you can also use it for three traits, four traits, 15 traits. Anyways, so we have in our example here, um, a pig or two pigs, and they tell us that black is dominant to white. So we're going to say big B is black and little B is white. It also tells us that tall is dominant over short. Oops, let's put a little T there. Okay, so these are our alleles. And it says the first pig is heterozygous black and heterozygous tall. So he's heterozygous for both traits. And then uh, whereas our other pig is homozygous recessive for both traits. And um, next we would find the parental gametes. So this, this would be like the parental cross over here that, we, that I'm just highlighting right now. Uh, we would find the parental gametes. Okay. And so in our sex cells, we can only have one allele for every gene. So um, our first parent, um, we could use the FOIL method. And so we could have big B, big T in one sex cell. We could have big B, little T. We could have a little B and a, sorry, a little B and a big T or a little B and a little T. Um, the other parent only has little b's and little t's so they can only make one type of sex cell little b little t so in this situation it would end up being a, a punnett square that is a four by one okay so in terms of like what it would look like i'm going to just make a little table to kind of show you here um it would look something like this and you would put um theoretically if all this worked out for me let me see if i can add a column to the left there we go so you would put the little b little t allele here and i'm going to actually see if i can delete that um make it white there we go so that's kind of deleted oops there we go we'll delete that one as well okay so that looks a little bit better so uh we have a uh, little big little b little t on top and then we can put the other parents um gametes on top big if this works out for me here okay big b big t okay, you can also have big b little t and little b big t and little b little t and then you would just fill them in um if you have a capital letter you would put that one first you keep the b's together and you keep the t's together okay. and so we get i'm just filling it out and then for um in terms of like what work do i need to show um we would probably ask for a phenotypic ratio so the, we would list the phenotypes from most dominant to most recessive. Okay. So I'm looking for um, black and tall. Oops. Um, how many of those I have? I'm also looking for um, black and short. So it's a dominant, dominant trait, dominant and recessive trait. I'm looking for a recessive dominant. So that's white and tall. And then lastly, I'm looking for our uh, white and short, which is recessive recessive. Okay. And so if I go back in here, um, this box would be uh, black and tall because there's one big B and one big T. So I have one of those, oops, one. Um, this box would represent a pig that's uh, black and short. So that's one of those. Uh, this box would be a white pig that's tall. And this one would be, oops, I messed up my pundit square here, um, would be a white pig that's short. Okay, so I have my ratio is a one to one to one to one ratio. Okay, so ratio would be one to one to one to one. Okay, oops. Um, here's the shortcut. Okay, so you could take the um, 
probabilities of um, coloration and height individually and multiply them together and get the same phenotypic ratio. Um, so we can look for um, the coloration, coloration ratio. Okay, so it's big B, little b, cross with little b, little b. Um, what are their chances of getting the same, the same phenotypes? Okay, so I'm going to kind of prove to you that we get the same thing. Okay. Okay, so that's, I'm going to delete my numbers here to, we'll go back over it and show you that you do get the same answer. Oops, let me just... There we go. It looks a little bit better. Okay, so here's my shortcut, like I said, um, and I think your book calls it the multiplication rule. Okay, um, so you can find what are the chances, if you did this Punnett square, of getting um, black okay, coloration, and so it would be three out of four to be black, okay, um, and then to be a white um, piggy, it would be one out of four chance, okay, so if you did the Punnett square. On the other hand, if you did the height Punnett square, um, it was heterozygous tall um, crossed with short, and you would end up with um, tall being also three out of four, I believe. Was it three out of four? Uh... Oh, sorry. I got my stuff wrong. It's two out of four and two out of four, which reduces down, of course, to one half. Okay. Sorry. See, this is why I should draw my Punnett squares out. Okay, that's better. Um, and then we have tall. There's half a chance that the offspring would be tall. So that's equal to one half. And then short, also one half. Okay. And if you need to draw out the Punnett square, there's no harm in that. Like, as you can see, I just made the mistake myself. Um, so anyways, we're now looking for being a pig that's both black and tall. So we're just going to multiply our ratios together. Okay, so there's one half chance um, times one half chance, and that's going to equal one out of four. Okay, um, and when we do this for the rest of them, you end up getting one half chance of being black again. And then um, we saw that it's one half chance of also being short. Okay. Um, so you get one half, which would equal one out of four. Okay. And then um, moving along, same thing. Okay. One half times one half, which equals one out of four. And Uh, one half times one half, which equals one out of four. So as you can see, the ratio is the same. It's one to one to one to one, or there's a one in four chance, which is the same thing we saw here. Out of four options, there's one out of four that would be black and tall or black and short, et cetera. Okay. So this is the shortcut and you can do this with three traits. Okay. And so I, I uh, would like you to try that on your own. Okay, what if we had, um, we'll use some of Mendel's traits. Red is, uh, or, sorry, big R is red, and it's dominant over white. Okay, and we'll use little r for white petals, okay, for a flower. Um, we can also use plant height. Big T is for tall plants, and little t is for short plants. And we can talk about uh, the flower position if it's on the end of the stem versus like off to the side of the stem. Um, so he said that uh, side flowers are called axial and it's actually dominant. Whereas uh, the flower located at the end of the stem is called terminal and it's recessive. Okay, so if you had a plant that was big R, heterozygous for um, coloration, and height, um, but had terminal flowers, and you crossed it with 
a plant that was exactly the same, okay, I want you to try and see um, what you get as a ratio um, for having a offspring that's red, tall, with terminal flowers. Okay. So I'll give you a minute to do that. Not really, you could just pause the video. And uh, you should end up with, and I did this ahead of time. I, I did all my work here, okay. And you should get, you should get nine out of 16 chance. Hopefully you can see my work. Okay, um, moving on, I wanted to talk a little bit about, oh, so basically the answer is nine out of 16 chance. Okay, wanted to talk a little bit about sex-linked traits. So um, sex-linked traits are carried on either the X or Y chromosome. The Y chromosome is so small that it does have um, fewer traits overall than the X chromosome, and the X chromosome is essential for life. You cannot be born without an X chromosome. So you need to have at least one, okay? And um, there are a few uh, traits linked to the Y chromosome. Um, for example, some men grow hair on the outside of their ears. That's called hairy pinna. That's um, Y linked, okay? But uh, typically they like to focus on X linked traits. Um, some of the more, more common X linked traits are hemophilia, which is a blood disorder, a blood clotting disorder that was really uh, common in the royal family because of all the inbreeding, um, as well as uh, colorblindness is sex linked. And um, we watched a video last year about a little boy named Lorenzo Odone. Um, some of you probably watched it as well. And he had um, adrenoleukodystrophy, which was sex linked. So in sex linked traits, they're more prevalent in males than in females. Uh, these traits are uh, recessive. And so uh, you would have to acquire two um, recessive traits if you were female to show the recessive disorder. However, um, in males, because males have only one X and only one Y, if you have one defective gene, you have the disorder. Okay, so uh, we're going to do a quick hemophilia problem, okay? And so you have to include the sex chromosomes when doing these problems or you will get the problem incorrect. And it's not just me being picky. You actually um, will not get the probability of having a daughter with a disease or a son with a disease correct if you leave off the X and Y chromosomes. Okay, so... Um, this is question two from your packet. Okay, so we'll do this one together. If a boy's father has hemophilia, so we know that um, the father, because he's male, he has to be X, Y. Okay, so that's his genotype for being male. And he has hemophilia. So um, maybe I'll step back one second and let's define some alleles. So you can be X, big H, and it should be a superscript H. Okay, uh, maybe I can do that quickly. Let's see. Um, I can. Okay. So it should look something like that. Okay. And uh, maybe I'll zoom in. Oh, that looks a lot nicer. Nice and zoomed in. So um, that is the genotype. So X big H is the allele of um, the normally produced gene that doesn't cause hemophilia. It means that you're able to produce the clotting factors. Okay, so I don't like, um, let's put this, um, normal functioning gene. Okay, um, whereas X little h, okay, is the um, hemophilia gene. Okay. Again, I'll try and go change this. Um, because this is located on the X chromosome, um, you would put the letters only on the X. Um, it is not located on the Y, so Y is just Y. Okay. Um, so anyways, uh, dad has hemophilia, so he's going to have this X little H. 
Okay, that's dad. And then mom um, says that she has one gene for hemophilia. So she's considered a carrier. Okay, so she's going to be X big H and X little H. Okay, so that's mom's genotype. And they want to know what are the chances that uh, the son will inherit the disease. So they already know they're having a little boy. Okay, so that's one of the things. So um, you would draw your Punnett square. And let's see if I can draw a table for us. Sorry, it's taking me a little longer than I had hoped. <laughs> so we would put dad's genes or dad's alleles in one box. Okay. And he has a Y. Uh, we would put mom's alleles up top. Okay. And then we're just going to fill in the boxes. So... Um, oops, I should really put this one first. Okay, so the first child could be a daughter. Okay, so she's X big H, X little H. Uh, she would be a carrier, but she would not have hemophilia. Okay, um, the next scenario would be um, a daughter. Okay, so also X little H, um, but oh, sorry, she would have hemophilia. She would be X little H, X little H. Okay, because uh, she got a defective copy from each of her parents. Um, in the box below, we would have X big H, Y. Okay, so this would be a son. Okay, and then in this box, we would have um, X little H, Y. And so as you can see, the boy has inherited this, this disorder from his mom, but mom is not colorblind. Um, and dad is colorblind. He's able to uh, pass it on to his daughters. One's a carrier um, because the mom's ex big H masks it. And so this, if this was the daughter that was born, would not have the disease. However, this daughter uh, would be colorblind. Okay. Um, so, but they were asking about sons. Okay. And so just looking at the boys here, what are the chances that the boy will inherit the disease? It's a 50% chance if they know they're having a son. If the question asks, what's the chance of them having a daughter with normal vision? Okay. So then it's okay. Well, we look at the daughters. What's the chance of the daughter having normal vision? Well, 50, 50. Okay. Um, and then they can ask, what are the chances that their child will have hemophilia? Well, these two would have hemophilia. So it's a two out of four or one half chance that they would have a child. So just be careful um, how they phrase the question. Okay. Um, moving on uh, to pedigrees. Okay. And so this is part nine. And I would like to look at um, question number two. Again, I'm just kind of doing all twos today. Um, so a few things. Um, this square, okay, um, is for a male. Okay, so males are represented by squares. Females are represented by circles. Um, this horizontal line connecting the male with the female is a relationship line. It used to be called a marriage line. Uh, this vertical line is um, showing that they had children. They had four children, and we read them from left to right. That's their birth order. And so um, they had two boys first. The boys are older, and uh, the girls are younger. Okay. Um, I can also see that uh, they shaded in the square or the dad. Um, that means that he has the disorder, okay, or the trait. Um, and then we can half shade in carriers, okay? And sometimes they don't do it for you because they want you to think about it and figure it out. Um, and then here we can see that um, we need to figure out the genotypes the best we can. Um, and so it's a little bit of like problem solving. Okay, so uh, for dad, um, I know that he has at least one dominant gene and I'm gonna use the letter A, 
Okay, and I'm actually going to, um, let's see, I think I drew it out for us. Okay, so I'm going to kind of just like write it down real quick. So I know that he has at least one big A. Okay. Okay. Um, I know mom, because she's not shaded in, um, and this is a dis dominant disorder, as the problem said, that she has to have two little A's, because even if she had one copy, because this is autosomal dominant, um, one copy or two copies, she's going to be fully shaded in. There are no carriers in this scenario. Okay, so this is what we have so far. Okay, I, all I know for sure is dad has at least one big A and mom has two little A's. Looking at their kids, um, I know that the sons, what their genotype is, I know that they both have to have a little A. So I'm going to write that down super quick. Okay. So this tells me that they had to get one little A from mom, okay, but they had to get a little A from dad as well. So that it's a little bit of detective work I did. I can figure out that dad also has to have a little A. Okay. Um, with the same um, thinking, line of thinking here, I know that mom has to give an allele to each daughter. Dad has to give an allele to each daughter. So because they're fully shaded in, I know that they have to have at least one big A from dad. Okay, so I'm going to draw that in or write that in. Okay. And mom only has little A's to give. So I know that both girls are heterozygous for this trait. But even, it, even though they're heterozygous, they're fully shaded in, they're not carriers. Okay. If they were a carrier, we would half shade them in okay. and they would look like this. If it was a recessive disease, we would half shade like this. Okay. Um, if someone has passed away in a pedigree, um, unfortunately, we cross them out. Okay. Something like this. They're just like crossed out. And then if they, um, maybe there was a relationship that didn't work out, there was a divorce, maybe, um, we would put a slash through this relationship line right here. And then, so it would look like this. Okay, so that's showing a divorce. Okay, so I'm going to stop our video here. I hope it was helpful. Um, please do problems uh, part six, um, seven, and uh, part of nine. Do the pedigrees. Um, I know there are a lot of them, but they hopefully go pretty quickly. Um, we will do the gene language um, on Monday. Okay, thank you. Bye.